Hello my dear students and welcome once again to another video for our class in Programming 2. In this video, we are simply going to look at some programming problems that require iterative solutions and then uh, create a recursive version of the solution to those iterative problems. So here we are once again in our Visual Studio Code Editor. And the first thing I want to do is, of course, create a new file. And I'll call this iterative2 recursive. Okay. And then, first of all, uh, let's have, let's define a problem. So the problem we're going to do is uh, simply display the, the message hello world uh, multiple times. Okay, so I'm going to write a function here that is going to do that uh, particular specification. So I'm going to have a private void, uh, sorry, static void. I'll just call this iteration 1 and we're going to pass in a number which is going to be the number of times the message will be displayed on the screen. This is a very simple problem uh, but just to make sure that uh, we are going to start with easy problems and convert them into recursive solution. So the what we can do here is, of course, uh, we're going to do a for loop. And we'll have i coming from, uh, uh, first, the i, we need to get the length of our string. Actually, not the length. By what am I talking about? Let's just have from 0 to while until i is, a uh, while i is less than n, and then i plus plus. And then we're simply going to display hello world. And maybe we want to add here a, uh, a number. So I'll just start the count from 1 instead of 0. And until i is less than or equal to n. So that we can put here i. And then a dot to display a number with a period. So let me run this program, try and run this program. So inside of our main method, I'm going to call iteration 1 and we'll pass in 5. Okay, And we'll put here a label, iteration 1. Alright, so when we run this program, let's see. Run Java. Okay, so we have here iteration 1 and it says hello world five times because our uh, invocation, we used 5 as the parameter for our n. So now let's do the same. This time using recursive function. So I'm going to call this private uh, static void recursion 1. Again, we're going to pass in n as our uh, parameter and here all we have to do is well because we could simply say we're simply going to display the n plus a dot and the word hello world just like that but we are going to have a recursive call depending on whether n is still greater than one maybe so if n is greater than 1, we are going to call recursion 1. So this is the recursive call. But this time, uh, we are going to, going to pass n minus 1. Alright? So, this is now the recursive solution to this particular programming problem. So, if we are going to try and put it here, I'm going to have a message first. Let's bump it down. We'll call this uh, recursion1. And then we'll call, we'll call recursion1. 
and then inside of it will be 5. So now we have two calls, one for the iteration 1 and another for the recursion 1. And hopefully they will have the same output. So let's try and run this program. Run. So there we go. We have iteration 1, displays hello world 5 times. And we also have recursion 1, displays hello world 5 times. So same problem, different solution. This one uses iteration and this one uses recursion. Let's take a look at another problem. So let's write out the problem here. It's going to be... Uh, uh display the string in reverse well i think that's uh an easy task to do so first we're gonna have a recursive uh the iterative solution to this it's going to be private static void and we'll just call this iteration 2 and we pass in our string which is str and then what we can do is here we get the length of the string. That's going to be str.length. Okay. And then uh, what we can do now is uh, we can do a for loop. For int i is equal to l minus 1. Oh, l, that's the length minus 1. While i is greater than or equal to 0 and then our i is going to be decrementing so that from here we can display without the ln just the print we're going to display the character the str dot car at inside of i and at the end we'll just oops we'll just add here a system dot out dot print line with a blank string all right, let's try this and put this inside of our main. So we're going to call this uh, iteration2. And we'll, we're going to invoke the function iteration2 here. And we'll pass in a string. Uh, let's just uh, define a string first. Uh, so we'll have a string message is equal to uh, the quick fox. Okay, and that's what we are going to pass in here in our call to our iteration 2, right? So now let's run this program. Let's see what's the output of this. Hopefully, it's going to be an, uh, uh, the reverse of the message. Okay, so there you go. Iteration 2. Uh, we need to do something with uh, the, the display so that it's going to have a space. All right, there you go. What? What's wrong? <laughs> Something wrong here. Iteration 2. Oh, nawala ang akong call sa method. Iteration 2 message. Okay. So let's run this again. Alright. Here's iteration 2 and it is the reverse of the quick fox. Alright. So that's the iteration uh, solution to that problem. And now, let's try and write the iterative solution to that same problem. Well, uh, with this particular problem, it's going to have a different uh, parameter set because uh, we need to declare a, an int that is going to describe or represent the position of, uh, of the character. So, we can write it like this, private, static, void, as we call this recursion, recursion2, and we pass in a string, str, but this time we will also include an int, which is our index. We need this int for our index. And oddly, we, we simply are going to call system.out.print, and we simply put here the str.car at. Uh, I. However, we have to have a recursive call here. And the recursive call is only going to call if our I is not yet uh, equal to or while or if, if the I is um, lesser than 
uh, if the eye is lesser than uh, the length of a string. So it's going to be if i is less than the length of the string, str.length, oops, str.length minus 1. Uh, why? Because uh, we are going to, uh, the, the length of the string, if for example the word is, uh, say, try. If the word is try, the length of that string is 3. However, the highest index is only 2 because the index is going to be 0, 1, 2. So that is why we have to make sure that the strength of uh, the length minus 1 is what is being compared to with the i. So if that's, if that's the case, if i is still less than the length of the string minus 1, then we are going to call recursion 2. So this is now the recursive call. We pass in the uh, we still pass the string, but this time our i is going to be i plus 1. Okay, and that's it. So let's let's do it here. We'll have a, another message, and we'll call this uh, recursion two, and we will call recursion two passing in the message, which is our string, but we will have an i starting from zero. Okay. Uh, so that's it. And let's try and run this program. Uh, before that, let me put an ending line here. And so, let's try and run this program once again. And hopefully, we'll have the same output. So, we have for the iteration 2, the reverse of the quick fox. And for the recursion 2, also the reverse of the quick fox. So, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. It is, uh, this is a simple demonstration of converting an iterative solution into a recursive solution. I hope that you have learned something from this video. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, of course, like always, uh, please subscribe <laughs> and like this video. And I'll see you again in the next one. Thank you so much.